Well, hello there. Uh, thanks for joining me on this Monday at five o'clock. Um, I hope you're having a great Monday. I hope you, I hope you had a great weekend. Uh, I had a, a busy weekend, but it was there was football on, which is great. I love football. So it was nice to watch a little bit of football in between all the painting and other things. So, um, but welcome. Uh, hey, Donna, how are you doing? Donna's in the house. Um, so today we're going to be talking about uh, doing some paint studies. Um, and this is something I do a lot before I work on a larger painting. And uh, hey, Sandra, thanks for joining us. And uh, so I'm just going to talk about why I like studies, um, why you might want to do them, I, uh, why I find them personally very helpful, especially for diving into something uh, large and uh, that takes a lot of paint and materials. Um, so I find studies very, very handy. So I'll show you an example of one. I've got this big yellow painting behind me, and um, uh, I did a study for that one. I did a couple of them, actually. So I'll uh, kind of show you that as we go here. But uh, as I'm going along, um, if you have any questions um, about what I'm talking about or anything related, please throw it in the comments. And uh, <laughs> Don is still here and hanging in there. Um, um, hello, Donna. Another Donna. I got the double Donnas. I got Josie in the house. Thanks for joining me, everyone. So, um, hey, JC. JC's in the house. Um, so I appreciate you all joining live and um, saying hi. Hey, Annette. And uh, so let's talk about what a study actually is. Um, uh, I call studies uh, in other forms of painting and art, uh, like illustration, um, a lot of other abstract art, uh, conceptual design, um, any kind of classical drawing, like in the olden days, the Renaissance and all those, those guys, uh, Michelangelo and Leonardo and uh, Donatello, uh, they would all do studies, uh, both drawings and paintings, basically little practice pieces uh, before they'd work on a big, large uh, painting or big, large finished piece. So studies have been, have been around for a long, long time. Um, they're basically just like practice, practice pieces um, and or little bits or parts of a larger painting. Uh, some paintings, um, this is outside of paint pouring, but have many, many components. Let's say they have like 10 different figures in them. You'd want to do a little study for each figure kind of work out the drawing and then you'd work out the colors maybe. And then also the composition, how it all fits together. So studies are just kind of uh, uh, taking and doing small little paintings or small little practice pieces before you jump in and dive into a big, gigantic, complicated piece. Um, so that's basically what they are. It's like a small little practice piece. Uh, when I do studies, um, I usually use an eight by 10 or like a nine by 12 um, and just do a little practice painting before I uh, dive into anything like larger than a 16 by 20. So I think that's about the size that I want to, um, you know, do a little uh, practice first. So anything like 16 by 20 and larger, um, it's a lot of paint that it takes to uh, work on those sizes. Um, you're working on you know, like gallery wrap canvases or you're working on uh, panels. So, you know, those are expensive surfaces to work on. So it's, I think, worth the effort um, to just do a little research, do a little practice, um, uh, mix up your paints, uh, practice the layering. You can check your color schemes. Um, and before you dive into one of these great big paintings, and then the worst thing is if you're unhappy with it. So... Um, I'll show you a little study. This is a study I did, uh, oh, a couple years ago, uh, a little yellow and blue. There's yellow, blue, gold, um, a variety of different yellows and things in there. Uh, and then I did this one before I did this big yellow painting behind me. Um, and so that one turned out very nice. I love that painting. Um, but this gave me some confidence uh, to know that the bigger one, uh, will turn out okay. Um, obviously, it's not going to look exactly the same or even close usually, but it'll kind of give you um, an idea of what 
a larger painting could look like. So um, what, what can you learn from doing a study like this? Well, uh, the first, the things that I look for, first of all, is if it's a new color palette I haven't worked with a lot, um, it'll give me an idea of if I like those colors together or if I want to alter the color palette, maybe uh, remove a color or add a color. Um, so it can give you a lot of color uh, ideas uh, if it's going to work or not. Um, also, if you get a lot of mud or you don't like the way the colors are blending, well, then you can change the color order, the way you're layering the cup, or you could even remove a color altogether again, or um, uh, add more of a color or less of another color. So it gives you a lot of ideas about what um, you might want to change or alter uh, in a larger piece. So let me check my notes. Um, the other thing it does is it just gives you practice doing the technique. Um, so if uh, I'm going to be doing a a uh, little ring pour uh, study uh, a little in a little bit, but um, it gives you a little practice. So you can practice the actual technique on a smaller piece uh, before you jump into a bigger piece. And, uh, and that also gives you confidence. Um, and if you do a little study and it works out and you like it, well, now you have a whole lot more confidence about diving into a bigger painting. So um, I think studies are very important um, at least they're very important for me. Um, you don't always have to do them. Um, if you're, you know, if you're have a whole bunch of leftover paint and you just want to dive in and do something crazy, absolutely go ahead and do it. Um, this is kind of a structured way of, of painting for me. Um, and uh, one thing I always do when I am doing a study is I'll fill out one of my uh, journal pages. So I have uh, one of my journal pages here. And uh, so I'll walk you through it in a second. Um, but I always like to fill that out before I do my actual painting. It gives me a kind of like a blueprint to follow. So I know exactly what colors I'm going to layer in my cup um, and what order. And then I know exactly what I'm doing. I pour my little study. If it works, awesome. Then I can just kind of use uh, my study journal page for my big painting. Uh, or if it doesn't work, I can go back and alter it and try something else. Um, sometimes I've done maybe three or four studies before I've done a larger painting. Um, sometimes the studies I've done have just deterred me from doing a larger painting at all. It just didn't work out. Um, I tried maybe once or twice um, or three times and oh, it just didn't, I just didn't like it. So I just scratched the whole thing. And that can save you a whole lot of time. Um, you know, you're spending time doing the studies, but it's valuable time, I think. Um, it take and it saves you a whole lot of paint and supplies um, before, you know, if you're mixing all this up, you've never tried it before, you pour it on a, like an 18 by 24 or larger, um, and it doesn't work, well, that's pretty depressing, you know, and that will um, uh, really bum you out. So, and there's no guarantees that you know, a study will lead to a great larger painting, but it does give you an idea of what it could look like. So, um, you know, there's no guarantees in paint pouring at all, really. Um, you're flying by the seat of your pants most of the time, but uh, um, because the paint likes to do its own thing a lot, but um, doing these studies do give you an idea and allow you to uh, alter and uh, adjust things um, for a larger painting. So that's kind of what a study is. Um, so that, again, here's my little yellow one. And I did this one, um, before I did my big, the big yellow one behind me. Uh, and I have a, uh, put that down. I have a nine by 12 right here. Uh, so I'm going to do a little nine by 12 study for a, uh, 18 by 24 painting. I'm going to be doing later, um, in a YouTube video for tomorrow, hopefully. We'll see what the study looks like, right? So, but uh, it's a very simple color palette that I'm going to be using. Um, I've used this palette before. Um, it's one of my favorites. It's uh, it's dioxazine purple. It's uh, brilliant blue. These are both Liquitex colors, and it's uh, gold, and then white. And this is a split complementary palette, um, which is a color wheel thing. You know, color theory. Uh, uh, color harmony. 
So, but I'll show you a little bit about my uh, journal page in a second. So I got my paints mixed up. Um, I have an idea of what I want to do for this painting. And, oh, something crazy happened on the screen. Let me just check um, the comments here. Hopefully you're all still with me. Um, and see if there's any, uh, hey, Donna. Uh, and uh, Annette says she's famous for scraping and do-overs. Yes, I have done many of those as well. Um, doing these studies can help with that. Um, you know, I'm not going to say they're going to eliminate that, but, um, but it can help reduce them maybe. Um, okay. Rhonda says that, uh, still with you. Awesome. Thanks Rhonda. Um, yeah, I had some like flashy thing happen on my screen, so I'm not sure exactly what that was, but, um, okay. So let me flip the camera over quickly. I'll walk you through my journal page that I have here and then we'll do a little painting. So let me uh, flip over to my top view camera. And so here is a journal page. Hopefully this will get a little less blurry in a second, but I'll just walk you through it um, quickly. So at the very top under intention, uh, intention for this painting is basically a study for an 18 by 24 ring pour. And the technique is gonna be ring pour, mixing recipe is just my basic, uh, formula, flow trial and uh, flow trial and paint. So you could say a two to one ratio, two to two parts flow trial, one part paint, and a little bit of water. Uh, this is a nine by twelve canvas size. The total paint needed is three and a half ounces for a ring pour at this size. I'm going to use actually maybe a little less because in this technique, uh, what I want to accomplish is really stretch the rings out a long way, really stretch them out a lot. Um, so it almost doesn't look like a ring pour. We'll see if it works. So the color scheme is a split complement, uh, which is a yellow orange and then a blue and a purple. That's um, a split complementary uh, color harmony, um, which is a, it's a great, I love this um, color palette, this um, split complement. And uh, that's one of, the, uh, one of many you can use. Um, so my colors are basically gold, purple, blue, and white. So it's a very simple, uh, just four color uh, color scheme. And down here, um, this is my little cup, layered cup order. And uh, I start from the bottom and work up, just like I would be putting paints in my cup. So I'm gonna start with white, and then I'm gonna go to purple, because I want uh, the light, the lightest light and the darkest dark next to each other. Um, the color you start with, in a ring pour usually ends up in the center of your ring. So it's the center of interest. So I want that to be white and I want purple to be next to it. So I have like a, a really nice contrast between the two. So I have basically three, I have one, two, three, that's three layers of paint. Uh, so three layers of each color. So white, purple, gold, blue. And then uh, the second one is gonna be white, blue. I'm gonna switch it up, gold, purple. And then the third one is white, gold, purple, blue. So anyway, that's what uh, I'm gonna try. So um, I have all my layers ready to go. I figured all this out before time, ahead of time. So there's no guesswork. I just gonna follow my, my, my plan. We'll see if it works. If it doesn't work, I can adjust it for and do maybe another uh, study if I want to before I dive into my big 18 by 24 uh, cradled panel that I have made and prepped. So, and then down here, I, I wrote a couple notes. Um, so the center of interest, I want a light and a dark next to each other. Um, I'm gonna, I wanna stretch, stretch the rings out a lot. And I might use a tiny bit of a thinner base coat just to help stretch uh, the paint out and cover the canvas and make stretching and tilting a little bit easier. So anyway, that's my plan. Uh, I filled out my journal page. And uh, if you don't have one of these yet, you can uh, download one from uh, my website. I'll throw the uh, link in the co in the comments maybe, and you can go check it out if you want to. It's, um, let's just throw up, uh, here's where you can go to get it if you want 
if you want to download it. It's acrylicpouringacademy.com forward slash journal. Um, and you can get it for free over there. And let me, uh, I'll throw it in the chat too. So you can uh, go download it if you want to. And Navala is here. Thank you. Hey, Navala. And uh, all right. So that is um, basically my plan. I'm going to move my, um, my messy uh, journal page out of the way. And I've got my little canvas right here, 9 by 12. And I've, I put tape on the back um, and with my hooks. The other thing you could do is instead of using a um, instead of using a stretch canvas, you could also do my uh, freezer paper hack. So you could um, you could um, make this a lot more affordable and just use the freezer paper to cover your canvas or or panel, like I showed in a previous um, in a previous live. So let me. Um, let's see, let me put my gloves on and okay. And then I've got my little cup here. This is a, it's a, a four ounce souffle cup. I'm not going to fill it up all the way, just about three ounces. And I've got my little chart right next to me. So I know what order I'm going in. I've got my paints mixed up. And give them just a quick uh, little stir. And they're all ready to go. Okay. So I'm going to start with um, my white. So I need to get, in this little cup, I need to get three, uh, three layers of each color. So I kind of have to, I have to kind of keep an eye on that, not put too much of each color in. Um, so I'm going to, they're going to be very, fairly small layers. So there's one. We got the white and we're going to go to purple. And we're going to go to gold next. And blue. I love this blue. It's uh, the Liquitex Brilliant Blue. It's kind of a, it's a very slightly greenish blue, but it's a very pretty, you know, bright blue. I love working with it. So we have our white again, and now I'm going to go to the blue. And then gold. Okay, I'm checking my journal page. And then purple. Okay, so one layer left, so a little bit more white, and then gold, and then purple and blue. So there's a little purple and then a little bit of blue. So these aren't exactly the same amounts in each, um, each layer. You know, there's a little more of each color on the first layer than the third layer. That's okay. You know, it, you don't have to get that uh, specific with with your with your um, journal page or anything like that. Um, so I've got my cup ready to go. I'm going to uh, put a little base coat on here, and I got to clean move these out of the way. To spread this quick. And we'll see what we can get. And the reason I'm doing this uh, color scheme and this um, technique is I'm, I'm creating a painting that's similar to the one that's behind me in my uh, studio. I've been asked many, many times uh, if I have a video on how I created that painting, the purple and gold and blue painting, um, and I don't, 
I did that painting a long time ago and I never recorded it. Um, so this one is going to be similar, hopefully. Um, we'll find out what it looks like. But this is the this is not the same exact layer order of is that painting, but I'm going to be doing the same uh, kind of tilting process. So here we go. We've got our paints in base coat. I'm going to pour our ring pour or straight pour. You could call this a straight pour or a ring pour. Um, I think they're very similar. And I alter the height slightly when I am pouring, uh, doing ring pours. Sometimes I go a little bit closer to the canvas, sometimes a little bit further. The further away you go, the little more blending you'll get with your paints. And we're getting down to the end now. So there's the white and the purple. And right at the end, I like to go fairly close, um, just so it's easier to get the cup and pull the cup away. So I like to tilt it back, and then pull it away. So we've got a nice looking paint puddle. Now I'm going to uh, just stretch out the paint puddle. This is my three-step uh, tilting process. So for step one is after you pour your, or get your paint on the canvas is to expand the paint puddle, just like this, without going over the edges, if you can help it. And then I kind of recenter the paint a little bit and then I kind of see where I'm, what, what's going on. And then I can decide which corner I want to tilt off of first. And I think I'm going to turn and go off of this corner first. And I just slowly move the paint down there. And I'm going to get rid of all that gold. And I like this purple. So I'm going to tilt backwards. And I'm liking that right off the bat. Next, I think you can go to any corner you want, really. Um, this is, I kind of go arbitrarily, choose my corners. Sometimes I'll go the opposite. I think I'll go to this corner next. And again, just slowly move the paint down there. And cover the corner tilt back. That's looking good. Okay. So now I think I'll go down here to this corner next. And as you, you know, tilt uh, off of multiple corners, the paint moves a little bit slower, but it's okay. It'll get there. Okay, I like that. Oh, I'm gonna go a little bit more. Okay, now back. And I'm just checking the questions as I'm tilting. And Donna asked a good question. How do you know how much paint you need? Is there a formula for this? And there is Donna. And uh, I created a cheat sheet for that and I will, um, provide you with that if you want to. It's also on my website, my canvas coverage cheat sheet for different size canvases. It comes in very handy and I use it every single time I uh, pour a painting. Okay, so that corner is good. We get, we're get we getting a little bit of a cloudy effect on this one, which is kind of cool. Um, I'm not quite sure why, but uh, I like it. Okay, so now I've covered all of the corners. That's uh, phase two of my 
um, tilting uh, formula or process. We're getting a little white dot there. I don't love that, but that's okay. So now what I like to do is set down the painting and take a look at it, assess it, and see what I want to do next, if anything. Let me move it in more in the camera here. And uh, like I mentioned before, I want to really stretch this one out. So I'm going to be doing a lot of stretching. And I think I'm going to get rid of most of this white up here and really stretch these rings out a lot. Um, it looks very nice, but uh, that was my kind of my goal is to kind of make it look like the painting behind me. And that involves a lot of stretching. So we'll see what happens. So let me turn this. I got a little drop of paint in there. I'm going to tilt off of this corner first. And so I don't know if I'll get all the way through all of this stretching. Um, it can take a little while um, to really stretch out the rings. Um, so you need a little bit of, of patience. Um, and this is definitely something that not everyone likes is stretching out all the rings um, in ring pours. I happen to really like it a lot, but uh, everyone has a different taste. Um, and I mean, that looked perfectly fine. I really liked the way it looked, but um, I'm going for something a little bit different. So I'm letting a lot of the white pour off. Maybe a little bit more. I just think uh, stretching the rings out can give you a much more unique, um, interesting composition. So, okay, now I'm going to go back this way. So this can be very boring to watch because I'm just holding a canvas like straight up in the air. But uh, um, so we'll see how far I want to I want to go with this. You might all leave. So I'll check the uh, I'll check the questions. Uh, Naval asked, is there a way to thicken paint that I've made too thin? Um, yes. If you add more paint and um, that will do it. I'd probably add more paint. And if you have, if you mixed it with Floetrol, maybe mix, add a little more paint and a little more Floetrol. And of course it depends on how thin you've mixed it. Um, if it's really, really thin, um, it might not be worth uh, adding more paint. Just I might just mix it from scratch again because you might be adding so much more paint to thicken it up to the right uh, level. Okay, so I'll show you what I got here in a second. So here is what it's looking like now. I'm liking that. So I'm going to stretch this way now. And uh, let's see. Uh, Carmine asked, do you ever put broken glass on it while it's wet? And um, that is a different technique. That's kind of the geode technique um, using like uh, crushed mirror and crushed glass. Uh, I have done that. Um, it's a fun technique. It's uh, a little more artsy and craftsy, but um, you can create some really amazing paintings um, with uh, like the geode type of pores. Um, so you don't do a lot of tilting like this. That technique is a little bit different um, in the way you apply the paint and use um, the different mediums and and things and see. So I'm landing the painting. Oops. 
So I'm just um, letting the paint move down here and then I'm going to turn it around again. So I'm just checking your uh, questions again. Um, let's see. Uh, JC likes the cheat sheet. She uses it all the time. Thanks, JC. Yeah, it's super, super handy. A couple of the different sizes, I'll remember how much, but normally I don't. Um, so I just refer to the cheat sheet. And Donna asks, would putting more white in that space you wanted to get rid of, uh, would that have helped? Um, I'm not quite sure about putting more white in there. Um, I don't know. I'm not quite sure what you mean by that one, Donna. So, okay. So that's coming off there. Now I still have this big giant white cloud, which I don't love. So I'm going to tilt the other way. Um, but, uh, I think it's coming along, like things are happening that I'm liking. So one, and some things are happening that I'm not liking. Uh, I'm getting kind of some of the uh, pearl cell effects like popping up, which I don't want really in this, um, in this painting. But um, see right here, this I don't love. These are like uh, pearl cells that happens when the white, the white pops through the other colors. Um, and it, it happens most often when the paint is thin. Um, I don't like that. That's probably some air bubbles maybe that were in there. Um, as I just mixed that white uh, previously. Donna says it was going uh, so slow to remove the white. Thought it might help. Oh, I see what you're talking about, Donna. Yeah. Um, like adding more white to kind of speed up the tilting. Yeah, that might've helped. Yeah, I, I typically just let it tilt off. Um, but, um, cause I'm, you know, patient. I like to just let it do its thing, but that could have helped um, to kind of help, yeah, f like speed up the tilting process. Okay, so that one, see, I have, it's hard to see. There's There's a lot of detail in this white. Like on camera, it probably just looks like a big white cloud, uh, but I don't love it. So I'm going to, um, this might take a while. So I might uh, stop and do this off camera, but uh, I'll, I'll keep tilting for a little bit longer. And uh, if you have any other questions, throw them in there and I'll, I'll see if I can answer them for you. Um, Annette asks, can you add another layer of colors on the white? Uh, that would be tricky to do um, because it would basically be like pouring another, uh, you have another puddle of paint on top um, and the two will not combine very well. Um, you'll definitely see the difference um, be between the two. So it's, I would just keep tilting. I think, you know, just keep working with what you've got. Um, it looks good in person. It, I know it, it probably looks like a big white, just blotchy thing on camera. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't, uh, unless you wanted to just completely re-pour over the entire painting, I wouldn't advise like doing another pour on top of a painting. So I'll keep on tilting. Yeah, and that says, yeah, same colors, so it flows easier. Um, yeah, from my experience, I can never get it to look right. Um, it, it just does, it just looks too different than what's on the canvas already. Because you have a, it's, the, it's really the edges of the new paint puddle create a big circular area and they will just not blend in with the existing paint, um, if that makes any sense. I've tried it, I've tried that numerous times to blend uh, like multiple puddles together. You always have like a, a, a line or some kind of a linear uh, barrier. Um, unless you're pouring them at the same time, 
that's like a, a like a multiple ring pour. You're pouring like three paint puddles all at once and then tilting them all together. Um, that can really look interesting. Um, you can make some really beautiful paintings. That's a fun technique. Um, and then someone asked if you shake it, will it give it the rain look? Um, not really. Um, shaking the paint doesn't really help it move too much, I found. But um, so I'll show you what I've got now. So we're moving the paint a little bit more. Um, but I don't like the, see, we're getting this, uh, the white popping through over here to make that kind of like pearl effect. So I might go tilting that off after we stop here. Um, I really want to pull all of this, this whole section down and really tilt all this off from about here um, onwards. I want that gone and it'll really open up all of these rings here and all, all of these rings. So, let's see. So let me, um, I think I'll just end it here just because it's gonna take a while to tilt all of this and I don't want to bore you with, uh, with just watching a, the edge of a painting. But uh, let me flip back and then I'll answer any questions you might have. Um, so I, I do like it though. Uh, we're, we have a good, a good start. And like just from the standpoint, this is just a test, right? It's just a, a painting study. So just from doing what we've done, I like the, the order of the, uh, the paints. So the layer order I like, I would probably use that again on the larger painting. Um, I really like the overall effect. Um, so I think I'm like, I feel good about it, right? Even though it's not exactly what I want um, the end result to be, I feel good about it. So I would feel confident uh, just from what we've done here to move into my larger painting, which I'll probably do. So I hope, so that's the whole point anyway, you know, does it work? Like, will your plan work um, and kind of do what you want in the larger version? So um, that's, I mean, so from that standpoint, I think it was a good painting. Um, and these do not have to be, you know, beautiful, perfect paintings. It's fun when they are. Uh, I like them when they're a really nice little uh, painting. You could sell that down the road. You could keep it. It's a nice, like, companion piece to a larger piece. Um, that's really fun, too. It's kind of like a series. Then um, you could have, I have have a couple paintings where I have maybe three test pieces. And then the larger piece, it's kind of like a series. It's kind of a fun a collection of, of similar works. Um, but, but I think we did a good job of, you know, uh, getting kind of what we wanted. So now we can move on to the, the larger one. So let me check out if you have any questions, please throw them in the comments. And uh, um, let's see, I'll scroll back up here. And, okay, so I will, um, uh, thanks Jan, Jan thinks it's pretty, thank you very much. And uh, let's see, let me, f uh, if you do not have it yet, let me f fly over to my uh, website quick and get the uh, canvas coverage cheat sheet. And so I'll throw that in the comments for Donna. So you can, um, if you go to my website um, to get the cheat sheet, there are two versions. There's a uh, ounces version, uh, like a US inches and ounces. And then there's also a, me a metric version with uh, centimeters and milliliters. That's how what I use for uh, the metric version. Um, but if you wanna go check that out, um, it's probably the most handy tool I have. Um, I use it all the time. And uh, Donna says, uh, uh, please post the finished study. I definitely will, Donna. Um, yes, I'm excited to 
see what will happen. I'll keep tilting and uh, then I'll maybe do the big painting and get, hopefully see the video tomorrow if it turns out. Um, and then Rhonda said, um, uh, the rounds and ovals always give me fits. Uh, I do have some uh, rounds on there, different size rounds, uh, and how much paint you need. I don't have any ovals on there. I don't use rounds or ovals, so I don't uh, have experience with that. Um, but I, I did calculate the rounds. So uh, hopefully from the rounds, you could extrapolate what you'd need for the ovals. Hope it helps. And, and again, um, the cheat sheet is only meant to really get you in the ballpark like pretty close. Uh, you can go a little bit more or a little bit less paint, depending on what you're doing. Um, but it's just to get you uh, in the ballpark. Um, and my, I have my formula. This works for me um, on how much paint I use. Some people use way more than that. Uh, and some techniques call for more than that. Uh, let's say you're doing, for instance, the, the one that is on the top of my head, if you're doing like um, a glue medium, like an Elmer's glue medium with silicone and you want to get the beautiful round cells, uh, you'll need more paint than what's on my cheat sheet, um, probably by an ounce or two, um, because you don't want to tilt so much when you're doing that particular technique. Um, but for the average flip cups, ring pours, uh, like the floating cups, um, it gives you a good idea for uh, how much paint you, you, you need to put on the canvas, like in total. So that's all the colors, um, like layered in the cup. That's the total amount of paint you need to, to dump on your canvas. Um, so, and, and so it's not meant to be like super precise. You don't have to get down to the like half ounce or anything like that. So, you know, do not think you have to be so perfect. Uh, I definitely am not. So a little more paint, a little less paint it will be fine. So it's just to avoid having like five ounces more paint than you need, then it all dumps off the canvas. Um, that's just a huge waste of paint in my you know, opinion. Or the worst is when you, don't, when you don't have enough paint and then you just cannot stretch it over the whole canvas, um, you just overstretch everything and it just does not look good. Uh, and then the final thing about the canvas coverage cheat sheet is uh, it always, uh, I always spread a, th a thin base coat of paint on my canvas. So it does not include that amount of paint. Um, I, to make it easier, that would be kind of complicated if you added so much like white or, or a different color for the base coat. So just assume that like you're going to put a thin base coat down um, on your canvas. Um, but again, you don't have to. Um, like that amount of paint will also work if you have no base coat, really. Um, so, you know, I, I don't want it, I don't want people to think it's like, oh my gosh, I have to be so precise with my amounts. So you de you definitely do not have to be. So, and Joey has a great uh, point right here. Um, consistency makes a difference too. And that that's absolutely true. If you have much thinner paint, you can use a little less. Um, so things like uh, well, like the Dutch pour, for instance, is a, a totally different technique. Um, that you have a base coat of paint, which the cheat sheet could be handy in helping you determine. But then you're you're using very small amounts on top of that to blow it out. So it doesn't really apply to like the Dutch pour. Uh, some techniques it really doesn't apply as well to. But for the majority of techniques, I would say it's a nice handy guide to use. So, all right, uh, anything else? Um, thanks for joining me on this one. I'm just checking to see if there's any other questions I might have missed. And I don't see any. So, okay. Oh, just a second. Um. Okay, no, I don't see anything else. A lot of great comments, though. Thank you very much for all the wonderful comments and uh, you know engaging in the chat. That's great. I really appreciate that. So I think I'm going to continue tilting this now.
until I, I'm happy with it or getting it kind of the way I wanted it to look. And I'll share it in the group um, tomorrow or when it's dry. And uh, hopefully on YouTube, there'll be a, a new video with a great big painting, similar to this, but of course different. So thanks so much for uh, joining me, everyone. And uh, I will see you very soon. And uh, don't forget to go and download those sheets if you want to. And you can find them uh, both on my site, uh, acrylicpouringacademy.com, if you can't find them in the chat. But the link should be in there. So, okay, thanks a lot. I'm going to get back to doing some tilting. I will talk to you again very soon.